I'm Gary Martin, one of the PGA pros from Huddersfield Golf Club and today we're going to be having a look at what's in my golf bag and we're going to be focusing on the top half of the golf bag. The reason I say that is because they did the lower half of the golf bag last week and I was surprised at how many people were sort of keen to find out what I'm using and what I'm playing so that's what's uh, inspired me to do the top half. But if you haven't watched the lower half of the bag, have a, have a watch, there's some great tips in that video. And I think uh, if you get in the comments as well, you have a look at what the other subscribers have written of things that they carry. There's, uh, there's some brilliant stuff that people's uh, carrying that you just won't believe. And I've even added a few bits into my bag since. So, we'll start off with the wedges. Um, I'm carrying the, the Voki SM8 wedges. Um, Titleist Bob Voki wedges. So SM8, so I've got them in chrome. I think that these are the very best on the market, you know. Um, I've, used, I've used a lot of Oki wedges over the years. Um, I think feel-wise are fantastic, spin-wise are great. You know, you've got to consider when you're buying wedges, I feel, if you want to be, if you want to have ultimate control around the green, make sure you get wedges with milled face. That's my personal sort of little tip there. I think when you're playing them short little touchy, cross, touchy shots across the green, I'm not going to edit that, I'm going to leave it in because I need to get better at speaking on camera. So when you're playing them little short shots around the green and you know you might have a little bit of you know wet ground conditions, you know grass is wet or there's a possibility that grass might be getting between your ball. I think the, the milling on the face is exceptional for that. I think it does really help you get a little bit more control. And if you're using a soft ball as well, you know, really creates that light extra friction that you need as well as what you know the grooves create so I think when you're spending sort of over £100 on a wedge it needs to include mill, mill face otherwise are you getting a you know you're just getting a, a wedge with a brand on and it's it's the same quality as you know I'm not naming any brands but something that isn't milled so yeah really consider that when you're buying wedges and if you can't afford to buy brand new wedges you know I'm sure you'll pick up some SM6s or SM7s in fantastic condition that'll perform just as well um, but yeah, you know, there'll be a lot of golfers use these. I know I'll not be the only one. I'd like to hear of anybody that's maybe used Vokies as well and, and that's gone away from a Vokie and that's really content with that. Because um, I'll not blob onto it too much, but I made that mistake. I ordered the, which we'll get onto, I ordered the pink irons and um, went for the fitting, love the irons. And it come to sort of, do you want some wedges? And I said, well, I'll, I'll try them, you know, I'll try them. And um, they look fantastic, obviously all matched in with the irons nicely, they were nicely distance gaps, full shots wise, you know, they felt alright. So I ended up ordering them, but then ultimately when I got around green with them, and I'd been that used to looking at Evoke, they looked a bit clumsy. Uh, when I tried to open the faces, they didn't seem to sit on the floor so well. So I think, I think there is a purpose for the ping wedge. Um, I think the purpose is probably more for the higher handicapper that's wanting to get a bladed wedge. Uh, because they feel like they'll get a bit more spin and control you know that smaller profile wedge and obviously the milling in the face but it's probably a bit more happier just playing it square you know doesn't want to open the face up so much but I think if you're a player that likes to open the club face then personally you know I didn't feel like the 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 uh, the, Voki, the, the sorry the, the ping wedges were were so good to look at when you try to open the face and that is only my opinion but uh, anyway I went back to the Vokies and you know, there's not. I've made the mistake now once of trying to change to something different, and it won't happen again. So, yeah, that that's what I'm carrying the wedge department. Um, irons wise, I've got the eye blades. So, anybody that knows me, um, I will know how much I love Ping as a brand, and it's not particularly for the for just the club side of things. It's for the for their ethics of the business and how they are with sort of customers and and um, and we retailers, you know, after sales service, fantastic. You know, if we ever have any issues with product, they're absolutely brilliant to deal with. And as far as warranty lengths, it's almost to our discretion. Um, so if we've got a customer that's, you know, got a club at five or six year old and a weight's fell out or something's happened to the club and we feel it's, you know, it's due to maybe a fault that they had in production or, you know, the customer's not heavily used them, they will bend over backwards to look after you. And I'm not going to mention other brands. Uh, I don't like disparaging other brands, but, you know, once your warranties run out with other brands, that's it. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, whether it's... The, just generally, that is it. You know, there's no sort of leniency whatsoever. But ping, I mean, as a, you know, I remember buying two iron 
um, off of eBay, I think it were i3 plus, and the, the, the swing weight came out, I rang ping and I said I got this two iron, the swing weights fell out, sent it back, replaced it under warranty, no, no charge whatsoever, the club must have been 15 year old and they did that for me and do you know what, it, it just stuck, I mean this, I suppose they've had value out of treating me like that because obviously I'm sharing that with you guys but you know, they win award after award for being fantastic in sort of customer service and, and looking after people and, and I really appreciate, I and mean, I love that, I love that. Working in the industry, it's like amazing, do you know, when, when there's a brand that stands a million miles above the rest, um, it really does sit, sit well with me that. So I haven't got the ping guidance just based on that by the way, um, but I suppose, you know, if it weren't from looking after me like that with customers and, and, and me in person then I might never have been for a ping fitting but I went for these uh, because I'd, I've always liked the, the look of the S series you know like the S59s, the S58s, the S57s but at that time I don't think I were a good enough ball striker to use them um, but you know over years of being a pro I've kind of learnt a little bit more about the golf swing and I've developed and um, and these are fantastic you know for a low handicap golf for anybody that wants to really have a good controlled ball flight the one of the you know the best ball flights I've ever played, they're so strong, you know, the flight into winds, I never worry about hitting a ball into a wind and losing the, the control of the ball flight, I think they're exceptional. Um, they are still a blade though, so you know, if you're around about that sort of seven, eight handicap and you're thinking, you know, am I ready to use a blade, do you know what, in my opinion, you're probably not, you know, because there's a huge difference between a ball striker of sort of a seven, eight handicapper and you know, maybe like a, a free to scratch golfer. There is a big difference. You know, obviously I've, you know, don't want to sort of upset anyone there, but I've started at 28 and I remember being off sort of eight and nine. And you know, you kind of sort of look towards blades or you're looking towards that muscle back iron because they look brilliant, don't they? You know, they look brilliant and it's, it's easy to be tempted, but ultimately you've got to get to that low handicap first. You need, a, you need to have that forgiveness to get down, you know, to that low handicap. And you've got to think, you know, is a lower ball flight going to help you get to that lower handicap? Because that's pretty much all you're going to benefit from these. A bit lower ball flight, probably a little bit more feel and a bit tighter dispersion on uh, on distance. But you certainly, you know, you're going to lose a lot of forgiveness. As soon as you step away from a mid size line to a blade, you know, you do lose a lot of forgiveness. And, you know, interaction with the floor as well. You know, if you've got a slightly steep angle of attack, you know, you're going to take big divots if you're not, if you haven't got that sort of... Um, your swing point absolutely perfect at the bottom so there's a there, there's some great benefits to these if you're a good ball strike but you know don't be sort of drawn into buying blades unless you you know you're a really really good ball striker um moving on to so, so sorry just to finish final lines i use four iron down to pitching wedge in the irons and then in the wedges i've got 50 54 and 60 so it's quite nicely gap there I could have possibly hit the free iron in these, you know, they're, they're not that, particularly I don't feel that difficult to it as a, as a scratch golfer, but um, but I, I have gone for the sort of U500 free iron, so this is more of a sort of, well, you would call it a driving iron, I guess, it's a bit more of a, uh, a cavity, I suppose, you know, like a hollow design cavity, uh, and the reason I've gone for this is because I just love a club in my bag that I'm confident we off the tee, you know, if I've ever... If I've ever not played for a while and there's a lot of people watching up first tee, you know, sometimes I won't pull a driver out and, you know, this'll this'll get me down there 240 and, you know, lovely strong flight. What I would say if you're looking to get like a driving iron or, you know, something to sort of fit in between your, your four iron and your free wood, is if is don't jump into a two iron because I've tested two irons and I've tested three irons. And for, the, for a matter of, what, maybe five or ten yards, the sacrifice in, in forgiveness that you sacrifice from getting a two iron to a three iron, it's, it's just not worth it. Um, you know, I remember borrowing, um, I got this, an older version, I remember borrowing a two iron of James's and he got the three iron as well. And it were like chalk and cheese, it were like, come to, uh, the difference between it in the three iron and the two iron, it was, it was unbelievable, the difference in difficulty. So... I know obviously the Tawain might tempt people because it's an 18 degree and you're thinking, well, it's like a five wood loft, so you know, it, it, it sits well in your sort of, in the gap in your set, but you know, I think versatility wise, if you get a free iron, it's going to be a lot easier to get off a tight line on the fairway and having that confidence of seeing a bit of loft, 
uh, at a semi rough it's going to be easy to get flight you know to get that backspin to get it up in the air and off the tee you know I just feel that you know, a lot of people get drawn into a two iron when there's, they don't realise the extra difficulty it's just not worth the benefit so just consider that if you if you're thinking about one of these driving irons because this goes miles you know it, it really does uh, I'd say my four iron goes about two 2.10 and I'd say this, you know, you'd think a free iron might go 2.20, well this goes about 2.40, you know, so I don't need to worry about a 2 iron there. Fairway wood, I carry, I carry just a free wood, um, this is a fantastic club, so this is a G410, do you know what, I don't even think I showed you that 2 iron, did I, you can see I'm new to this, did I show you a close up of that, the U, U500. Um, I will put some close-ups in on these actually, I'll edit some close-ups in so you can get a bit closer look. But Fairwood, I got the G410, I've not gone for the LS Tech in this. Um, you know, I don't play as much golf as uh, I'd like and I try to make the game as easy as I can um, in, in the areas that I, you know, I say that I'm using a set of blades. But what, I'm a good ball striker, I've never lost that, but as, a, as somebody that doesn't play as much golf as I'd like, I'd say where I have sort of deteriorated a bit over years is off the tee. Um, I'm not as straight as I used to be. The, the, the shot shaping is not as consistent as it used to be. So I've gone for something a bit easier to hit in the woods and I've just gone for the standard G410. Um, you know, I, I compared it to the LS Tech and the LS Tech was just a little bit smaller profile. Didn't quite sit as well for me. I like, the, I like, the, I like this. Uh, I think it sits really well. And I've gone, I've controlled the flight by using a diamond and whiteboard shaft. So if you don't know much about shafts, when you're buying a shaft, I've had this question a lot, and you know, it's something I probably need to try and touch on in a video at some stage. But if you don't know much about shafts, there's a bit more to buying a shaft than just the flex. So obviously, you know, most people will generally know whether they need a regular or a stiff or an extra stiff shaft. But I don't know whether they know so much about kick points in the shaft and weight of shaft, you know, and what that actually can do to the performance. So for me, I use an extra stiff shaft, it's got a high kick point in it which produces a lower launching flight but I've also got a heavy flex so instead of being like a 70 gram which most people are carrying a fairway wood mine's an 80 so an 80 gram it just helps with that so a little bit of a transition at the top anybody that's sort of quick and snappy use them when you've got a little bit heavier shaft it helps you just control that transition so it helps you with the extra weight to the club you're more likely to just swing a little bit smoother from the top but also, again, you know, a little bit heavier just makes it play a little bit firmer, uh, I feel. So for me, I've gone for a really nice and easy head to hit, something that gives me confidence looking at, but then I've used the shaft to really control the backspin. I mean, if I'd gone for the SF, you know, the standard ping shaft in this, for me and the way I strike the ball, it'd have just gone up like a rocket. Um, so this really helps me control, you know, and hit a good strong ball flight into wind. And then finally on the driver, oh sorry we have got the putter haven't we as well, finally on the driver I've got the G400 again but this time I did go for the LS Tech because when I put the LS Tech head down compared it to the standard one I didn't see much difference in the head um, so looks wise they both appealed and gave me confidence but I thought you know obviously if I can take the advantage of a low spinning head and still look down it and feel like I've got a forgiving club then I will. Uh, and that's paid off really because um, you know even with this whiteboard in and it's heavy and it's a high kick for a low flight if I were being critical not on the club but it's obviously me um, is that I feel like sometimes my ball flight can get up a little bit you know and potentially in wind I do lose a little bit of distance but you know I think sometimes um, you know it, it swings and roundabouts and you're not always going to get everything so for me I personally I'm prepared to sacrifice probably 10 or 20 yards for that extra forgiveness and that's what I feel like I'm doing at the minute with this. You know, we'll have all been there, we'll have all been there where you've got that drive that goes straight down the middle and you're feeling like, you know, your ball flat's a little bit high and your, your mate's done it anywhere near as good as you but because he's got a lower flight it, it, it rolls further and you're tempted to change but um, I've done it so many times, you know, I've been fitted and I've got like something that's provided such a good ball flight but as soon as I've lost a bit of confidence with driver, I'm all over again, you know, I can't keep it straight. And this is one that, you know, for, for, the, for the amount of golf I play, it's one that I'm confident in using and it, it does help keep me straight. So, really do enjoy that one. And then the final piece in the bag, you might have seen this on James's channel recently. 
This is the uh, the PXG one and done putter. Um, what I would say about this is it's absolutely exceptional quality. So it's it's blacked out from sort of head all the way shaft and grip. It looks a little bit like a combination between sort of the Odyssey the Odyssey number no. seven and the Odyssey two ball. So possibly two of the best mallets that's ever been made. Uh, for me, I love the look of that. I love something that's going to help me focus on keeping the putter moving straight back and through. I try not to play too much with an arc in my stroke, so the alignment on this is great. Uh, the story behind this really is that, um, you know what I'm like with golf clubs if you've watched James's channel, I always like, I like, I'm very, very proud of my gear, you know, it's, it's something that I love doing and I don't mind spending a bit of money on golf equipment. And I wanted something a bit special, I wanted a special putter, uh, but I couldn't bring myself to spend special money. So, uh, I didn't want to just go and get a Scotty Cameron off shelf because, you know, they're a bit sort of not common, but, um, you know, I, I wanted something a bit better. I wanted something a bit special and a bit, bit better than that, you know, a bit rarer. So I was looking at, you know, maybe getting like a, um, a limited edition Scotty, you know, like the, the Tirelli and the T22 or something like that. But I just couldn't bring myself to spending sort of, you know, five, six, seven hundred pounds on a putter. But I wanted some exceptional quality. So I was looking at different brands and anyway, this popped up. And I thought, well, PXG don't do bad putters, you know, or bad quality product. It was 325. And honestly, when I unboxed it, I could not believe the quality of the engineering of this. You know, if you're really wanting to treat yourself, I know it's a lot of money, 325, but I feel like I've got a seven, eight hundred pound putter in my hand because engineering wise and quality, it, I don't think there's anything better for under 500 pounds. Well, I, Unless I got like a Circle T or I got something, you know, limited from Scotty, I don't think they're standard. I'm going to be brave and say this, but I don't think their off-the-shelf putters are as good a quality as this. I think this is better engineered. And yeah, that's only my opinion, but I really do. I get more of a buzz out of that than I do looking at a Scotty at £300 off-shelf. So it's definitely one to consider if you're wanting to treat yourself on a putter. Now, the only tip I would give you is I paid £325 off the internet which you guys can you guys can also get that as well, is that I were a bit tight and I didn't get the weight kit. The weight kit was seventy pound, um, and having tested it now, I feel that it's possibly just a little bit light in the head. Um, so I've got that question now. Do I order the weight kit for seventy pound? So, you know, obviously there's some interchangeable weights here at the bottom, or do I get some lead tape and you know stick a bit of lead tape on this you know at the back here where the tungsten is? So I don't know yet, but um, obviously not being plain, so I've not really had a chance to sort of sort of sort that out. But that's something I'm going to need to look at. Um, so yeah, I've covered a little bit about what I've got in my golf bag. Um, you know, if you guys have seen James's channel, you'll know that I ordered a couple of PXG woods as well. But I don't consider them in my golf bag yet because you know, like most people, we haven't played golf, have we? So until I actually get a chance to test them on a golf course and out on you know, an outdoor range, I don't consider them to be in the golf bag. So, um, you know, it's pretty hard for a club to get in my golf bag, I'd, I'd say, because I'm really happy with everything. Um, I don't think there's room really for me to change. I mean, if, if I were gonna change anything, it would be driver. And that's just basically because I feel like I'm getting the most out of that ping that I can. Um, and maybe you know that's that ping's brought me back to life with driver and I've got that a bit more confidence so maybe it's time to maybe see if I can sneak a few more yards um, but yeah that's brought us to the end of what's in my bag um, you know I will get in comments I'm trying to stay as interactive as I can um, and, and, and reply to as many comments so if there's any questions about what I've got in my bag and maybe why I bought it or if there's any way I could ad try and help advise you on you know uh, what you you know, any questions you've got or, you know, if you're looking at a particular iron and you're not sure if it's right for, for the level you're playing to, anything I can do to sort of help, you know, while I've got a small following I'm, I, and I can sort of reply, you know, take advantage of that because I know, I know I'm already struggling and I've only got 3,000 followers, so I, I understand these guys that have got, you know, loads and loads of followers, I don't know how they can keep up and I'm guessing they just can't, so uh, while I've got a small following, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm replying and staying as active as I can. Um, and I'll try to help you where I can. So, yeah, get in comments, guys. Let me know what I can help you with. And, uh, yep, I'll see you. See you in a couple of days.